Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be learning how to install and use the Linux Bash Shell on Windows 10. So for those of you who have followed along with my videos for some time now, you know that I mainly use the Mac OS X operating system, and occasionally I'll also do Linux tutorials using either Ubuntu or Kali Linux. And I'm gonna continue using those operating systems into the future, but I also have a lot of people using Windows machines who contact me and say that they wish that they could follow along with my terminal commands while on Windows. So for those of you who are on Windows, Windows 10 actually now comes with the option to use a Linux bash shell uh, within Windows, which is really nice. And this is a real bash shell. This isn't a virtual machine or SIGWIN or anything like that that I may have suggested in the past. So in this video, we're going to learn how to use this feature so that you can use the Linux command line within Windows. So let's go ahead and get started. So first we need to turn this feature on. So in the lower left corner of your screen, let's click on the Windows icon. And within here, let's just type features to search for that. And the top result here should be turn Windows features on or off. And you can also find that in the control panel if you dig down within there as well. So once we open that up, let's scroll down here towards the bottom until you see uh, it's on my machine, it's four up from the bottom that says Windows subsystem for Linux. So let's check that to turn that feature on and click OK. And that's gonna run through a couple of things here first to apply those changes. And once that finishes, it says that we need to restart our computer uh, for those changes to take effect. So I'm going to uh, restart now and I will pick up the video after my, my machine is rebooted. Okay, so now my machine has been restarted and I have logged back in. Now at this point, there are a couple of different ways that we can get to the next step. So the first way is if we open up our command prompt on Windows and then we type in bash and press enter, then we can see that it says that the Windows subsystem for Linux has no installed distributions and that we can install those by visiting the Windows store and it provides a link here. So we could paste that into a browser and it would take us to a list of those distributions in the Windows store. Um, now, another way that we can get to this step is just to simply open up the Windows store. So whichever way is easiest for you. So I'm gonna open up the Windows store here. So I could have either followed that link or you can come in here and type in uh, Linux or Ubuntu. So I will type in Ubuntu and press enter. And when we search for that, we can see that the first option here says uh, Linux on Windows, and then we can click to go get the apps. And also listed down here in the apps, we can see Ubuntu listed here. So I'm gonna click on get the apps just to see all the different listings here. So we can see within here we have Ubuntu and two others listed. So for this video, I'm going to install Ubuntu. So I'm going to click on this and install it. Now this might take a second, so I'm just gonna fast forward to the point where this installation is complete. Okay, so once that installation is complete, then you should get a notification here where you can launch this. Uh, but if you accidentally close that down or don't see that, then we can actually launch this from the start menu as well. So if we open up the start menu here, then we should be able to see Ubuntu in here. So now I'm going to open this up. And now this is going to say that it's going to install some additional things, and this could take a few minutes. And also notice that when we open this, we open this using the Ubuntu app. We did not open the Windows command prompt. So we'll look at running bash through our Windows command prompt soon. Uh, but for now, just be sure that you opened up the Ubuntu app. So all of these long installations are just one-time things. Uh, so don't worry, you're not gonna have to go through this more than once. So I'm gonna fast forward this video here until this installation is complete. Okay, so once that installation is complete, then you should see a screen like this where it's asking for a Unix username. So for this, I'm just going to type in Corey MS and hit enter, and then it's gonna ask for a password. So I'm just gonna put in a password really quick here, and they'll ask to uh, confirm that. So I'll put in the same one. Okay, so once you put in that information, then you should see this screen here. So this is our Linux environment. So let me make this text a little bit bigger here really quick so that everyone can see. So let's see, I'll bump this up uh, to 36 font. And also, actually, I think that's fine right there. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. So now let me maximize this here and clear the screen. So now we can use Linux commands like you may have seen in some of my other videos. So if we print the current working directory and just do a PWD, then you can see that we are in this uh, home Cori MS folder. And I if I list all the files in this folder with an ls-la, then we can see that we have a few dot files here. 
Now, it's not entirely clear where we are on our system here. Like, if we wanted to actually see some files on our Windows machine, then where is our desktop and things like that? Well, in the Windows subsystem for Linux, our machine is accessible through a mount. And in a minute, I'll show you how to make a shortcut to this location. But for now, let's just navigate to that location and see what's there. So to do this, let's do an, and I'm going to clear my screen, let's do an ls on this mount folder here from the root directory. And within mount, I can see this C directory, and that is the C drive on my machine. So let's CD into that. So I'm going to do a CD into mount and into that C directory. And now let's list what we have in here. So I'm going to list uh, everything. So I'm going to do an ls-la. So now within here, we can see that we have our program files and users and things like that. Um, so now let's try to CD into my personal desktop. So that is going to be within users. So I will CD to users and then do an LS. And we can see that we have this Cori directory here. So that's what it is on my machine. It's going to be different on yours. So now I'm going to clear my screen and CD into my home folder for my Windows machine. So now if I do an LS in there, then we can see we have a lot of stuff here, um, but one of these is the desktop and documents and downloads and things that you're used to seeing on your uh, home user folder. So let me CD to that desktop and hit enter and clear my screen and then do an LSLA here. Okay, so now let me clear out this screen here and now let's see if we can actually work with some files on Windows using Bash. So first let's try to create a file. So let me say touch uh, test.txt and hit enter and actually this text might be just a little bit too big here so let me uh, take this down a little bit here I'll do a size 32 font and I think that should still be uh, readable but also can fit on one line there okay so now if I look at my Windows desktop here then we can see that it actually did create this test.txt file on the desktop so that did work so what about editing this file within Linux? So let's try to edit this file using nano, which is an easy text editor to use in Bash. So I will do a nano test.txt and hit enter, and this opens up the nano editor. Uh, so within here, let's just say uh, testing file, and then I will close out of this. And in, within nano, this is control X and hit Y to save, and then hit enter to keep that file name. And now if we cat the contents of that file to see what's in there, so cat text.txt, text then we can see that it did write that to the file. Okay, awesome. So this is working well. Um, so at this point, if you're familiar with Linux and the command line, then that is pretty much all you need to do in order to begin using it on Windows. So at this point, you could stop watching the video and you'd be able to follow along with my command line videos in the future. Uh, but for those of you who are interested, I figured I'd also go over a few extra steps and show a few more things that we can do with this. So first of all, you can also install additional programs using the apt-get install. Um, so for example, let's say that we wanted to use the tree command, um, which is basically a nice way to see our file and directory structure. So if we try to use this now and just type in tree, then we can see that it says the program tree is currently not installed. You can install it by typing sudo apt-get install tree. Now you could go ahead and run that, uh, but before that, let's update and upgrade our packages so that we have the newest versions of everything. And this can take a long time, so just be aware of that. And to do this, we can do sudo apt git and update to update uh, to the latest versions. And we need to uh, type in our password here. Okay, so now that's done with the update. Um, and also that password that I used for the sudo command, uh, that was the password that we specified for the Unix user, so be aware of that. Okay, so now I'm going to clear this out, and now I'm actually going to do an upgrade. So instead of update, we will do sudo apt-get upgrade and run that. And we'll have to hit yes to continue here, and now it will run through those upgrades. And that can take a while, so I'm going to skip forward until this is complete. Okay, so once that is complete, let's go ahead and install tree. So to do this, we can do uh, sudo apt-get install tree and then need the sudo password again so then that should run through the installation and this, this one should be fairly quick okay so once that's complete we should be able to use the tree command so if we run that then we can see that we get this nice file and directory structure using the uh, tree program that we just installed 
Okay, so now one last thing that I'd like to do is specify an alias so that we can quickly switch to our Windows Home folder instead of needing to remember that it's under this uh, mount C directory. Um, so for now, I'm going to uh, change back to the Linux home directory, and we can do that just by typing CD. And now to create an alias, we can edit the .bashrc file in our home directory. And we can do that, uh, so I'll just open that up in nano. So I will uh, do the ampersand, which is the same as our home directory, dat .bashrc, so open that up. And within here, we can see that it came with some stuff in this file already. So let's just go down here below the part where it checks if this is running uh, interactively or not. And then we will put our alias in here. So we can do this. I'm just going to do an alias, and I'll call this win home and equal to, and no spaces between any of this. And we want that to be equal to uh, CD. And then we'll just uh, go to the uh, home directory that I was just in. So on my machine, that is within users and Corey. So now anytime I type win home, it's actually going to do a change directory into this location. And that is uh, my Windows home folder. So now I'm going to exit out of this by hitting control X since I'm in nano, uh, Y to save, and then enter to just keep the same file name. Now, after we've saved that, we need to source that file for those changes to take effect. So we can just do that with a source and then the same file, the .bash RC file in our home directory. And once we do that, then we should be able to navigate to our Windows home directory just by saying win home and hitting enter. And you can see that we did a CD to that directory. Okay, so one more quick tip when working with Bash on Windows. Uh, so let me close this out here and open up the Windows command prompt. And let me enlarge this. So if you are ever using the Windows command prompt and want to switch over to using Bash, then you can easily do that just by typing Bash, and it will open up a Bash terminal in the directory that you're currently in. Um, so when I first open this, it puts me in my home directory. Um, so let me navigate to my desktop, and the command for that is the same on Windows as it is in Bash. We can just do CD desktop and hit enter. And now that I'm on my desktop, let's say that I wanted to use the grep command to search for some text within a names text file that's in a demo folder here on my desktop. Now, if I try to do this here in Windows command prompt, so let me do a grep uh, with some options of NI. Don't worry if you don't know uh, grep, it's not uh, a big deal for this video. I just wanted something uh, to give an example here. So the file that I wanna grep and search for this name is within this demo folder and names.txt. So if I run this within Windows, it's not gonna know what you're talking about. It's gonna say that grep is not a recognized uh, command. So we really wanna use bash here. So if I type bash, then it's going to open up uh, our Linux terminal here. And you can see that we're al it already put us in the location where we currently were in the Windows command prompt. So that was on my desktop. And now if I type out that command again and do the same search, uh, so let me type this out here, and that was within a demo and names.txt. So now if I run that, then you can see that that worked just fine within Bash, and we got the results that we were uh, hoping to find. And then to exit back out to our Windows prompt, we can just type exit, and it takes us back to our desktop where we currently were uh, before we even went in. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Now, there are many more customizations that you can make to your Bash terminal, and I have some videos on that subject that I'll link to in the comment section below if anyone is interested in those. So now after this video, hopefully anyone using Windows should be able to follow along with any of my command line tutorials if those have ever been of any interest to you. So for example, I'll be releasing a video soon on how to use the grep command in depth. And we saw that for a second in this video, but grep is an extremely useful text searching tool in the command line, especially once you learn the ins and outs to search for exactly what you want. And I'll be using my Mac in that tutorial video, but with Bash now available on Windows 10, uh, more of you should now be able to follow along with that video as well. So if anyone has any questions about what we covered, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.